we wanted to take you through a little bit of a information video and a roast on the 2020 BC2. It's been a couple of years since we've uh, had a video on this. There has been some minor changes, but a lot of the things have remained the same over what was in the 2018, at least as far as how to operate the roaster. When you receive the roaster, it will come in two parts, as you can see right here, and they'll be all wrapped up. These parts you put together, you take the uh, aviation plug from the cooling tray and put the uh, put it attach it to the roaster, and then you also uh, put the chaff fan on top of the chaff unit, which is already assembled on the roaster, and then attach the aviation plug to the back. And you can't mix those up because uh, they both have different type uh, plugs. Once you do that, you put the hopper on because the hopper will be all wrapped up sitting inside the tray. And you put the hopper on and you're uh, pretty much ready to roast. Uh, you just need to put some kind of an exhaust system. If you're just doing a temporary roast, you can get by with uh, this flexible piping. Yes, you can use the temporary piping if you're setting up in a garage uh, and run the pipe off the chaff unit and a separate pipe off the cooling tray. Uh, or you can do a permanent install and we have information on that to show you how to do that. But right now we'll just kind of take you through and show you some of the features on the roaster and then we'll uh, uh, show you how to set a couple other things up such as if you decide to get a magnahelic gauge and you want to uh, use that with the roaster. That's a pretty easy setup, but we'll show you how to do that and we'll show you all the other parts as well. Okay, so the, uh, this is your control panel and once you've plugged it into either 220 or we supply along with this for those who don't have 220 a free 110 voltage converter and our manual shows you how to set that voltage converter up which is real important that you do it right and once you do that you've got it plugged in this is your power button that turns on the the power which also powers up the Omron digital controls the timer and your chaff fan now there is a separate control for the chaff fan which you can see right here that turns it on and off basically since ours this machine has a manual dial damper system we encourage you to turn this up 100 percent all the way and do your airflow control with the manual dial damper which we'll show you a little more about that during the roast uh, the next button is your roasting or your igniter button i don't have it hooked up to gas right now and this is an lpg unit but uh, when you press that you'll hear the igniter uh, sparking the igniter needle trying to light and uh, it would do that in conjunction with turning your gas uh, uh, on at that point because when you click on the igniter button it not only uh, starts the igniting on the needle it also opens up your solenoid to allow gas to go into the roaster and of course if you don't start it within a few seconds for safety reasons it shuts down and you need to restart it in case it didn't light because you wouldn't want your room to fill up with gas this turns on the timing, which you can see the timers right here. The reset button for the timers down at the bottom. So this is basically just your on-off switch. That's your reset switch. This is your cooling fan on the chaff unit. Uh, it's a very powerful fan. In fact, it's the same power that's in our BC 3.5. Because the roaster's smaller, we don't have mixing arms on it, which really just kind of get in the way with a, a roaster this size. And so we'll show you what, what we do when we do a full roast to uh, get, get a nice, even cooling on the beans in two to three minutes. I'm going to take you to the back of the unit and show you a couple of uh, features next. So on the back of the unit, of course, you've got your... Uh, drum motor right here. The drum speed control is right here. It's a knob that you turn from uh, basically from just the on button all the way up to 10. Generally 
we do our roasts uh, with this set between 7 and 8. This is not RPM, uh, so uh, you base it on the tumbling of the drum at about a 45 RPM, but that's usually right around 7 or 8 for roasting coffee. Much lower if you're doing cacao beans. This is the on-off switch for the drum. I encourage people to never turn it off, just leave it on, because if you turn it off, and the next day you go to preheat and forget about it, you end up preheating half of the drum and possibly creating a problem. Right here is our uh, USB port for uh, uh, hooking in it for, with the data logger for using with Artisan or Cropster. Uh, this unit and all our BC units also have Bluetooth connectivity. If you look down here on uh, your left, this is the solenoid, this is where the gas hooks up. And then beside this, this is something that wasn't on the 2018 models. We have brought the uh, circuit breaker outside of the unit uh, so that if, uh, this, if, if it uh, gets a surge and shuts down, you can uh, kick it back on without having to open up the unit. And then uh, to take you to the back of the unit, I'm going to take you to a different unit. I took you to a different unit because that one I couldn't access the back. So you can see your chaff unit in the back with the uh, door that opens up so you can vacuum out or brush out your chaff. It also has uh, the electric uh, um, plate on there. It's got your fan for keeping the electric room cool. These are your two connections that I mentioned for the aviation where the uh, both the cooling tray fan which has four holes in it so you can't mistakenly put it in the wrong hole it goes on the bottom and then you, you basically just push it in and hand tighten it and then the one for the chaff fan has just two uh, electrical connections so you push that in hand tighten it down and one nice thing about the BC units is uh, some people worry about how they're going to set up their their exhaust and their building may limit where the exhaust needs to come off. The chaff fan can be turned in basically uh, in 180 degrees. Obviously you don't want it turned in front of the machine. So if, if you're uh, needing to put your piping on this side of the roaster you can do that if you need to put it on this side of the roaster or straight back however but you want to leave access so you can get to the chaff unit to uh, clean it regularly. Now looking at uh, what some people call the front of the roaster, I personally call the front where I stand at uh, where the uh, control panel is, but where the cooling tray is, you've got your hopper, you've got your uh, latch to open up the hopper to let the beans in, you've got your, uh, on the 20, uh, 19 and 2020 you've got a open bearing system here that you will grease so that those generally last much longer than sealed bearings here's your drum door for opening and closing your uh, trier spoon which the arrow stays down until you're ready to uh, bring out a sample pretty decent size for a two pound machine a pretty decent amount can be drawn out to uh, check and then you also have your light on and off switch right on the uh, light itself and the nice thing about the BC2 is because the maximum you're roasting is two pounds at a time you don't really and you got a powerful fan which you can see over here you don't really need mixing arms which tend to lift the beans and if you don't watch it can pour the beans over top the uh, cooling tray so when we uh, release the beans uh, we generally just take and spin this around so that it makes a nice even covering or coating of the beans on the cooling tray. And then when you're ready to empty the cooling tray, the stainless steel uh, container pops off, allows you to pour it into whatever unit you are, then conveniently put that back on top. Going back to our unit that's running, and here's in case you can see that, there's the light switch for turning the light on and off. You can see along with the control panel, this is your uh, needle nose gas gauge, or I'm sorry, gas valve. 
and this is your gas gauge. Generally on a LPG model, people want the 6 kPa model. Uh, if they go natural gas, because natural gas is a much lower pressure than LPG, they may want to go with our 2.5 kPa gauge. And then this is a debris tray because there's a little bit of space between the drum of the roaster and the front plate to allow for expansion. You'll get a little bit of debris that collects in that. It can easily be emptied out and it's a nice big tray. But these are uh, solid stainless steel drums, 304 stainless, which is really the, one of the highest quality stainless. Uh, has the most nickel of a lot of the stainless steel, so it really uh, serves a nice purpose as a drum. You can get these in double wall. We don't usually recommend that because the biggest advantage of double wall in a, in a smaller roaster, maybe five pounds and under, uh, is really that it allows you to do smaller sample batches. Yes, there's the uh, statements about uniformity of roast and harder to uh, tip, but really, uh, in a single wall drum, you can easily avoid those problems without much issue. This is your uh, manual dial damper, which starts at zero on the right, and as you turn it counterclockwise, it opens up the, uh, uh, the gateway so that your uh, airflow increases as you open that up. And when you use this in conjunction with the magnahelic gauge, it allows you to keep track of your airflow. Uh, much more precisely than a stepless fan speed control which is still available on this. You might wonder why did we even keep this on the roaster since we added this nice setup here. And The main reason is is so in between roasts, like say you've done a few roasts and you want to empty your chaff unit, because this is a continuous running fan when it's on all the time for the manual dial damper, you want to be able to turn off the fan for just a moment so you can empty your chaff unit without having to turn off the roaster itself. But then remember to always turn that back up to 100% and use your manual dial damper for controlling the airflow. So uh, a lot of people like to order the Magnahelic gauge with their roaster because it allows you to see the real, true, actual airflow that's going through the drum of the roaster at any given time and there's a number of reasons why this is really beneficial. It gives you indications if you're having issues beyond the roaster such as in your exhaust system where it begins to uh, change perhaps because something's preventing the air from freely flowing through or your positive pressure is being affected. So when you get this it's going to basically be uh, three parts. Most of the time it's going to be connected already to the bracket and that bracket uh, goes right here in the back. There's, I'll show you in a minute. There's two uh, pre-drilled bolts and then there's a silicone tube that attaches to the back of the uh, gauge and then plugs into the neck of the roaster which I'll show you in just a minute uh, where these parts are and how easy it is to hook up. Okay, you can see these two bolts right here, which you use uh, the uh, hex key, the metric hex key to loosen those, and then the this just goes right over back in there with the bolts put back in, and then I'll show you in the front, basically this tube is just ran alongside the roaster, and it, it's silicone, so it's not going to melt, and then it'll, it'll plug into the neck of the roaster, which I'll show you where that connection is. Since I had limited space on the other roaster, I'm going to show you on this roaster. So once that uh, magnahelic gauge is installed, you'll see there's a, a cap here that you use a uh, wrench to remove, and then you put this new uh, little connection in. And when you do that, it only needs to screw in a couple of turns. It doesn't need to go in all the way. In fact, it won't go in all the way. So just Turn it a couple turns because all you're really trying to do is get it to be airtight in the neck of the uh, roaster and then you connect that uh, silicone tube back up. So I'm going to show you in a minute after it's been completed on the roaster we're going to do a roast in today. 
So after you loosen that uh, plug with a crescent wrench or what have you, then you can remove it and then you can put in the other connector. So you can pretty much put that in by hand and then just give it a couple turns. You don't want to try to over tighten this, just a couple of turns so that it's nice and secure in there and then run this along the back and it will attach to the magnahelic gauge. So using a uh, metric hex key on the uh, BC2, it, probably on the BC1 too, also it uh, uses a 2.5 millimeter hex key. Remove those two little bolts and I'm not good at doing this left handed so bear with me and then uh, just install the uh, bracket with your magnahelic gauge pointing to in the direction of the control panel so you can be viewing it while you are uh, roasting coffee. So once you get that gauge nice and secure on there, just push the uh, silicone tube in there and now you're ready to go.